Carl. What? What would you rather do, right? Um, I sort of put you in a ball, squash your head, right? Tie your head to your knees, like that, right? You have to walk around like that, right? Like that. Until, until, until you're formed, totally formed, so you're, that's like the rest of your life. I just keep that for a year in a cage. Uh, and your head's like these, right? You're just walking out going, <laughs> right? <laughs> oh, Christ. Oh, Christ. Or, I do facial surgery on you, right? And you've got no face at all. I start your mouth. A nose, right, and rise that right, and just fed with a tube in your stomach and the breathing equipment. So no eyes. Yeah, no eyes, no nose, no mouth, no nothing. I'll take your ears off, right? So you're deaf, dumb, blind. You're breathing through a little, a little thing there. You're being fed straight into your stomach. And what's the problem with the ad on the knees? Well. You're in pain. You cannot. You can't use to walk like a crab everywhere. But I can still hear and see. Yeah, love that one. Yeah. What would you do? What was the first thing you do when you get out of the cage? Um. How long have I been in the cage a for? Yeah. Just. I'd, I'd, I'd call. I'd minute. call Suzanne. Just warn her. <laughs> <laughs> what would you say? I'd just say, look, I'm coming home. Long story. <laughs> Uh, can you come and open the door? Hi, TV's Ricky Gervais here. I just wanted to tell you a little bit about my new book that's coming out this autumn. It's called Ricky Gervais Presents The World of Carl Pilkington. With me, Carl Pilkington. Right. Yeah, it's uh, just a book, some of the ideas and some of the chats and uh, some of the stuff we came up with in the, in the podcast. The world record-breaking podcast, The Ricky Gervais Show. So, uh, what are you doing there? Just doing some drawings for it, just to uh, go with the stories and that that we talk about, some of the ideas and stuff. What's that? This one. Mm. Well, it's, it's something awe, isn't it? When, uh, when she farted for five minutes. That's like when she had the wind there. Just coming out there. She, like, had wind for five minutes. Oh, good. So, so just sort of pictures and that. So we could put this into the Booker Prize, could we? Yeah. Thumbs and that. Yeah. I'm still pretty sure that we would have got on all right without the thumb. Yeah. But if we couldn't, how about a thumb with one big finger? What's That works, doesn't it? It's just that idea I had, uh, do you know I went to school with, yeah, well look, there's a picture of them, the, the two, the sort of two kids who had big heads, they also had, had like webbed hands, so I just, they, they got by all right, they didn't struggle with stuff, so I just thought, you know, if everyone had hands like them, less fingers, less messing about. Yeah, was, maybe Richard and Judy can include this in their book club. Put a baby in a room with no contact with outside world. Why? Well, just just to find out if you know it becomes gay or straight or whatever. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Is it is it the outside world that's making them gay or straight? Is it you know what I mean? And how long would you leave a baby in a room? Uh, I don't know. How long does it take to go gay? I don't know. Like tw twenty years or something. All oh, right, good. You're sticking a baby in a room for twenty years. Yeah, I mean it's not uh, you know feed it and stuff. So oh, it's sure. through, through the letterbox and that. Don't don't go mental. And, and what would this be for, for Channel Four, would it? Uh, if they want to televise it, they can do. But I'm just saying, just do it if 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 it's not for the television. Good. Well, uh, uh, people are rushing to buy that book. That's uh, Ricky Gervais presents the world of Carl Pilkington. It's the sort of book that you'd find written in shit under the floorboards of a serial killer's house. Brilliant. Well, good luck. Cheers. Put my name to that. Oh, chimpanzee that monkey news, you.
It was this bloke who was a builder. Oh right? yeah. And uh, you know what builders are like? They sort of move about, don't they? From from sort of building to building, just building. <laughs> well, yeah. Well, once they built it, the building's done, and they move on to build some more. Building, building, just building, yeah. So he goes to his next job, and that right? Who does the builder? The builder. Yep. He goes to like the, the, the boss, building. the boss of this building, who's building it. <laughs> right. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And he and he says what unto him? Do you need anything building? <laughs> okay. Right. Yeah. So anyway, so he says uh, he says yeah yeah, there's plenty of work and that going about. Yep. He says we're working on this one here. He said. Uh, Get going on it, like there's your bricks and your cement and stuff. Get on with it. Yeah. Mm. So the so the plans. So nah. the, so the <laughs> just build. Just just start building. Yeah. Go up. To getting on with it and stuff. It's all going well. Right? Yep. Um, but he notices that there's someone working high up, mm. right, on, on <laughs> okay. the top bit. Sure. Because mm. do you know, like, there's girders and stuff on these big yeah. buildings. Yeah. And he's still building and, the bottom bit. And which he's is still. Weird. Yeah. Well, that's that's the the way the the do it there apparently just to sort of speed it up work from top to middle from top to bottom sure you know that's I mean? and that's where that's in imaginary land we so put anyway. the spire on now we better do the foundations <laughs> yeah. and then put some stuff in the middle to keep it up there so anyway he's he's saying to like the other workers he's going what's who's that up there who's that up like, there he's, yeah. he's working on his own the, what the little fella was he and the uh, little hairy fella up there who's the little hairy fella up there with the top uh, hard hat and, and the other fellas are going look you know don't ask questions you know the boss decides who he takes on we're mm. happy to be getting paid here <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Well, I'll see him when he comes down. So he said, well, he's, he's pretty impressive, you know, the, the work rate he's doing, the way he's getting from one girder to the other. <laughs> he Swinging, seem, is he? He doesn't seem to be scared mm. of the heights or anything. He said, no, just let him get on with it, you know, we work well as a team. <laughs> Lunchtime comes, they're all sat there, sat on a little wall, having the sandwiches, he's just thinking he'll come down in a bit. He's yeah. just carrying on. Yeah. Is he? He's just still going? Still yeah. going on that, right? Mm. So the fella says to the boss man, he says, isn't that fella up there uh, going to come down and join us for lunch? He said, uh, "He said, like I said, mate, don't don't worry about him, right?" Yeah. So he said, "Oh, anyway, you've reminded me that he's up there." He said, um, "He's doing a lot of riveting and stuff up there. He probably needs some more nuts to." Uh, right, sure. And what kind of nuts is that? Is that nuts to food or? So he said, "What nuts?" He said, "Yeah, just uh, there's a bag full of them there. Just just put them on the hook, send them up, and he can get on with his job." So anyway, he picks these nuts up. Nuts, right? yeah. Just ucks them on. He thinks they're not that heavy, no. considering, you know, I mean, they're normally pretty heavy, aren't they? Like, nuts big and bolts nuts, and stuff. Yeah. So, anyway, he has a little glance in. Oh, no, what's in there? Nuts. What, you mean nuts that you can eat? Nuts that you can eat, oh. right? So, they send the bag up, and he's thinking, what's all that about? He checks him out, starts to stare, works it out. You can see that he's a little chimp running about. So, he goes, I'm not happy with this. Why so isn't he? Yeah. He said, all oh, them Is the there. boss sitting in a tyre? <laughs> he said, "All oh, them lot out there might not be wise to what's what's going on here." He yeah. said, "But I've I've clocked it, and you're sending nuts up to it. It's a monkey. It's not on." So he goes, "Look, you know, we're just all trying to earn a living here." He said, uh, "Don't get involved in it. I'm happy to pay you, but I'm paying him. Don't don't interfere." He's paying him, and he's saying, "Look, I, I'm just not happy with this. It's it's not allowed." So the boss was saying, "Well, we pay honest, peanuts. Mate, we get monkeys." He said, "To be honest, mate, you know, uh, he, he's a great worker." <laughs> He's known for doing what he does. He's a good grafter. <laughs> if one of you's going to go, right, I'm afraid I'll have to let you go because he's, he's been here longer than that. Yeah. He was made redundant. None of that happened. He, he, was, he was laid off. None of that happened. He's laid off and that. And no. that's where that saying about, um, you know, like there's a lot of tower blocks and that in America. It's not like the chimp off the old block. He's, he's <laughs> where... <laughs> so that's monkey news. Come in. Right. Ah, Mr. Pilkington, and how are we today? Yeah, I'm all right, Doctor. Yeah, I've just uh, come for my checkup. Okay, then. Pop your pants off. What? Just pop your pants off. Well, and, uh, I've got to take my pants off. Well, because I have to pop my finger up your um, what, what? to check your prostate gland. Don't worry about it. Well, I am worried about it because prostate cancer kills ten thousand men every year in Britain. You can check that out if I get any symptoms. Well, there aren't always symptoms, and symptoms do vary from man to man. So the best way to check it out well, is I just pop my finger up I'm, there I'm really and have a feel. Just Don't worry about it. Is that it? Yeah. It's not that bad. No. I don't know why he was worried. You probably saved his life there. Does he have to be here? He's just a mate. Don't worry about him. He's just watching, watching me at work. Prostate cancer is the most common cancer diagnosed in men. The chances are you know someone who's affected by it. To help make a difference, please donate now. Well, congratulations, uh, Ricky. Much deserved, I'm sure.
Thank you very much. Uh, Ricky, I just wonder if I could ask, um, you're the most famous comedian in the world, and yet despite your incredibly successful career, you're still able to give enormous amounts of time to charity. <sighs> Shut up, embarrassing me. Well, that's what you've written. I well, just think. ask the question. No, I just wondered um, how you find so much time in your hectic schedule to help charity. You've got to find time. Um, 30,000 men are diagnosed with prostate cancer every year, 10,000 of which die of the disease, and a man dies every hour uh, from prostate cancer. So, you know, that's why I give so much of my time and raise so much money for, for, for cancer. I mean, I don't know if you've got any stats how much I sort of raised last year for cancer. Uh, it just says fucking millions. Yeah, and so. they're... They're welcome to it, you know. But I will say this, if I ever get cancer, I'm going to go into the nearest hospital and go, right, I paid for that machine, get that little bald fucker off it. Talking to little bald fuckers, Carl Pilkington. All right. Thoughts? Just one. It's 2006. Why are they still using the finger? Good point there. Uh, good question. Chris Martin from Coldplay. Got a few questions for Can you. Can I wear your sunglasses? Yeah. Okay, now, you like to buy clothes made in third world sweatshops because they're cheaper. Do you prefer Chinese or Indian made stuff? Indian. Chinese don't know what they do. See you later a little bit. I want, we want to get the noise, the microphone there. Right, ready? Hold on. Good. So you're just right. doing it. Hold on. Now, it's in position. <laughs> what if it... Look, oh. Ready? Yep. Oh, God, it... Oh! No! <laughs> It's like, it's like jackass. Now, at the Conservative Party conference a few years ago, you made a, a rousing speech uh, saying that if Labour banned fox hunting, you'd leave the country. Now, you did leave, but now you're back. Isn't that hypocritical? I just came back to get some stuff. To get my hunting gear. <clears throat> I came back to get two guns and a knife. No. <laughs> What's the other question? No, you famously said you don't trust black people. <laughs> Isn't that racist? I think racism is a state of mind. There's the sleeper sharing a tent. I mean, you got one t well, they've got one tent between them, have they? Yeah. But why don't they take two? A tent's not that big. Oh, yeah. So are they fighting now, or what? <laughs> it was cold outside, he said, come in my tent. And then that happens. What do you think, Carl? I'm still none the wiser as to why they do that. <laughs> <laughs> Are they both gay? I think if you have sex with another bloke, you're generally considered if gay. You, if you're willing to pop your, um, John Thomas up, John or Thomas, yeah. I think you could be considered... As a rule of thumb. Thumb. <laughs> what I mean is, if they're mates, they're going across the western, whatever it's called, right? Across <laughs> the, the west, on their horses. They say, come on, come in here, it's cold, don't be sleeping out there by that rock. Get in the tent. They get in the tent, there's still no mention of gayness. Then, one of them does that. I know. Well, I don't it, know. It well, must have been planned, is what I'm saying. No. How do you know what your job is? <laughs> no! It's not like you know what your job because is? Because a man and a woman, it's like, well, we know what we've got to do here. But with them, there's different options. So who, who, how did they know what the job, whose job was what? Are you saying how did they know who was on top, so to speak? Yeah, because it all happened pretty I quick. think you fight for it, I think it's first dibs, isn't it? Like bunks, like bunk beds, isn't it? I don't know the rules, I don't well, know. I don't know what the rules are. I don't know what the rules are. But, um... But then what happens then, Steve, after that night? Because of the difficulties and constraints of the time in which they live, they, they have to live a lie, so they both get married to wives. Uh, but they they maintain their love affair across the years and the decades. Yeah, but don't the wives get suspicious when they keep saying we're going camping again this weekend? <laughs> <laughs> well, you're very right, they do. <laughs> <laughs>
But you, you, you wouldn't suspect a cowboy, would you? Except the one in Village People. <laughs> yeah. He's the only, he's the, I thought he was the only cowboy. He's fairly. He's a little bit iffy. Yeah. I don't he, know. Hangs around, he hangs around with a Native American who's normally the antithesis of the cowboy. The cowboy they, and the Indian, they hate each other. They hate each Yeah, I know. Yeah. They're hanging out. So are you going to watch the rest of the film now? Have you, has it wet your appetite? Does it, could the film still happen even if they weren't gay? Is it just a cowboy film, but that's a bit of filler? Let's just have another watch and see if there's anything else. Oh, what does he want to watch it again? Are you sure you want to watch it again? <laughs> Listen, if you want to watch it again, watch it again. Yeah. No, I'm just... What? But no, if you want to watch it again... If you want to watch it again, watch it again. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid to watch it again. If you want to watch it again... <laughs> stuff for the book. So the World According to Carl Pilkington. Yeah. You can buy that now. Pre-order it on Amazon, can't you? Yeah. Or we'll wait till September 18th. Pre-order it now. Right. Who's that? That's me. Just, uh, I'm stuck in a spider. You said, you know, about what would you do and all that if you were stuck in the body of a spider. Right. So, I said I'd just have a sleep. So, there I am, just having a kit. Okay. Little sleeping bag. Mm. That's the thing about if you cut off an head, the body lives for like about a minute. It doesn't. No, it does. They did a test, didn't they? Yeah, they didn't. They did a test. We've done it. Got freaks. My favourite freaks. Oh, right. Oh, that's a. I mean, a lot of people want to know what your five favourite freaks are. I'd buy a book about that. So, number one, the elephant man. Mm. You know that. There he is, with his buns. Number two, pillow man. Yeah. Three Siamese twins, Annie. Mm. Four, three-legged juggler. Five, pig-faced woman of Manchester Square. They're not in like th that. Isn't in an order that I want to see them or anything. They just they're all as good as each other. Okay. So oh, okay. maybe uh, if you're a freak and you want to meet Carl, would you want to meet a freak? If we could, there's six billion people in the world. Must be somebody or less that, that wants to. Uh, would you want to meet the pillar man? Yeah, it'd be all right. Well, how's he going to get in touch? <laughs> Siamese twins, I don't like, because it's two. That'd be trickier. I don't think... What if one one like of them liked you and the other one didn't? He couldn't stand you. Yeah, one was like, I love Carl Pilkington, he's brilliant. All right, Carl, are you coming out? Yeah, but I wouldn't want to put him in that situation because I can go home. They're still bickering. So, yeah, I don't want to meet them. Uh, Three-legged juggler? Uh, yeah. What would he have to juggle for you to take your eyes off his legs? Well, that's the thing, though. He'd think I'd be getting him in to sort of do some juggling, and he might sit behind the desk and I'd go, oh. <laughs> I'm not interested in the juggling. I love the fact that you think you can get him in. You can hire this man who probably died a hundred years ago. The monkey, that was a fireman. Wasn't. Uh, just the idea of a cat with mops on its feet to clean the floor. That's that good invention that came out. I'm pretty sure that's not a real invention. And there's you washing up with your little trousers down. I mean, I must, I really must applaud the effort for this though, Carl. That's because good. most, um, no offence, sort of dimwits, uh, um, morons, cretins, uh, idiots, they think all this shit, but they don't bother it down. Yeah, and they certainly don't bother colouring it in. So, so well done. I think that's a, it's a brilliant book for anyone who's got, you know, really nothing else to do, or feel that they're sort of given to a worthy cause. Um, and that's available now on Amazon.com or Amazon.co.uk. And it's what is it like 200 pages, and it's got all these illustrations and yeah. great stories, and a forward by me, in which I. I mean, I'm basically going on about Carl being an idiot, which is the only truthful thing in the book. I, I, I'm pretty sure of that. Good. So, well done.
Have you ever been in a, a hospital when it's been shut down or a school when there's no kids in it and there's that sort of bad atmosphere of, like, weirdness? Yeah. Right? For the so, sake of argument, you Yeah! <laughs> We're wandering about, and I say, oh yeah, what's in this room, right? And all the floors are like a wreck and rotten and stuff. Oh my god. There's a little sign there, right? And I go up to it, and it says, flies this way. <laughs> so I follow the arrow, which goes to this corner where there's a shelf, about 3,000 dead flies on it, condom stuck on the top. <laughs> right. right. You might remember, in the first podcast, I was telling you about uh, this scary house that my mate lives in, where he's like uh, a security man. You're not, you're not like a security man, are you? What are you? Well, I just look after it. You just look after it and that. He just looks after it. So this is it, because I thought I'd show you around it, because just in case you thought I've made it up and that, about the, uh, the bit about the flies and all that, where there's flies on the shelf and stuff. So, this is the sort of state I was telling you how it's a mess. This is it. Ceiling's caving in over there. That's just there. Pair of pants. Right then, we've uh, found the room that I was talking about on the podcast uh, with the dead flies and that on it. Uh, this is the sign that, uh, that I was telling you about. Got a fly on it, right? Little arrow. There's flies here, look. Little ladybird there. Oh, flies attacking the ladybird and that. Right? So you've got that. So follow it along, and right, you think, well, there's nothing there. And you've got, if you can get the camera up there, right? Look at that lot. Oh, dead, dead flies. I'm just showing you this because some people have said, oh, you made it up and all that. But there's no way, just for the sake of the podcast, I'd go around collecting that many dead flies. Uh, there's a condom as well that I was talking about. Weird, isn't it? Hi, I'm Ricky Gervais, here on the set of Extras, Extras 2, coming soon, people are busy working away and uh, they're annoying me a little bit because I'm trying to do this, so I'm in track. Shut up! That's power. Okay, back to work. Um, and uh, 14th September, the new series starts. Um, we're here filming a scene for the final episode, actually. Um, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll show you around, shall I? Okay. I know what you're thinking. What hospital are we filming in? It's not a hospital. She's not a real nurse. <laughs> Unless we just put this in. Hey? Do these look ill? <laughs> Bad example. <laughs> We're going into the main studio now. We're just using a little corridor there. We're in a hospital. Ooh. Ooh. We're in the wrong studio. Yeah, I think we are. <laughs> Oi oi, who's this little face? Excuse me. Yeah, can I help you? It's Robert Lindsay of oh, my right. family. Well, not just my family. Citizen Smith GBH. 
repeated soon on E4. One of the best drama series in the last 25 years. What are you doing here, Robert? Well, I... Why am I here? Yeah, I've been asked to work with you two. That's an exclusive. That's not out. That's something the papers haven't got. Robert Lindsay's an extras as well. There's a little bonus for you. So, there's a little teaser of uh, Extras 2 coming soon, um, September the 14th, BBC 2, 10 o'clock. Um, but check out the website, uh, I'll do one of these every few days. Um, oh, oh, sorry, I've gone toilet. Oh, I've gone toilet. Can you empty it? Can you empty it? I don't know how he's getting away with this. Listen to this, right? Crudge evolved by goggles at one end and flagy plays at the other, right? Eventually becoming Whittles. Some crudge went on the other way, developing a uniflap and becoming a spleen. Spleen grew, in, grew into flunts and Whittles branched out as scruddlers and wumps. So I don't understand why people want to read about these sort of made up animals when there's there's weirder stuff than this knocking about anyway do you know what I mean like uh, I read something about uh, a crab that what it does it's born right and then it's floating about in the sea and it spends its days looking for uh, a mussel do you know like the mussels you get in the sea it spends its day finding one of them that's got a little gap in it gets in it that's it. That's it's done its sort of life's job. It just gets in the muscle and stays there. So that's that's pretty weird. Do you know what I mean? You don't you don't need to sort of invent a spoon, a spluff, and a wumph. The Mulon. It's the most intelligent being on the planet. It believes that all life is precious and never knowingly hurts another flannimal. The saddest sound in the universe is the whimper of a thousand moulons when one dies. See what I mean? That's, that's quite sad, isn't it? It's like whale noises, that, isn't it? Because they say, uh, what do they say? Like how a whale, if a whale's crying, another whale can hear it from miles away. Which must be well annoying, because I think, like, say if, if you're a whale and you're sick of hearing things crying, you'd travel miles to get away from that whale that's crying. But then, as you're going away from it, the chances are you're going towards another whale that's crying. So you can't get away from whales crying. And yet people say, oh, if I come back, I'd like to come back as a whale. There's no way I'd do that. Just having all stuff crying around you, you'd be well depressed. That's why they always look sad, whales. Because all they're hearing is crying. That's like a moulon. Yeah. I don't know what order this was in. Not that it matters. You know what I mean?
Ricky and Jane were going on holiday for a few days and had arranged for Glyn to come in and make sure the cat was okay while they were away. I'm sick of that cat. I was surprised that they hadn't paid for the little shit to go away with them on first class. <laughs> Blimey, getting a bit vitriolic in the uh, why diary. Doesn't he, uh, why doesn't he like the fact that I've got a cat and I, I love the cat? Why, why, it's why... just everything in that house that you've got gets sort of special treatment and it's a cat. And it what do you mean you get me? special treatment? You, sometimes we put I, food I, down for it, and yeah. sometimes it gets uh, uh, on our lap and we stroke it. You don't what, just stroke it. We're you not massage it. it. You massage its back. You go, no, are you stressed out? Well, no, you no it's out? good. It's, no, no, I'm not saying you stressed out. At no point did I say you stressed out. You <laughs> said, what the fuck are you doing for? Is it stressed out or something? I, 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 I like uh, touching my cat. To be honest with you, I don't like Ricky's cat. Oh, it, I can't believe it. Because it, this. every time I go around there, it goes straight for Magoolies. <laughs> I just don't like it. It thinks it's it. Do you know what I mean? The way it wanders about and that. So it owns the joint. Jonathan Ross gave it in. I reckon it was Jonathan Ross's cat. And he got sick of it. Oh my god. No. You know, he got sick of its attitude. And then luckily, like, Ricky's old cat died. So he knew Ricky needed a new one. Palmed it off onto him. That's the last we'll see of that cat. Oh look, there he is, look at that. Hey. They, they love beer and donuts. <laughs> so he was pretending he's joking there, but if that cat wanted beer and donuts, he'd probably let it have it. The thing is, it never goes out. So there's no chance of it ever coming to any harm. But it's gonna last forever. Do you know what I mean? We got through loads of cats when I was a kid. Because we lived on a main road. So none of them really got the chance to annoy me because they were never around long enough. If the cat sat on his knee, he, he won't get up. He sort of waits until the cat gets down because he doesn't want to disturb it. I don't know if he's just doing that to, to sort of wind me up or if that is the way it gets treated. Really does me head in, it does. When they go away on holiday, it's a big upheaval. You have to organise people to sort of come round and feed it and make sure it's all right. That's what's meant to be good about cats, that they don't take much looking after. My mum and dad's last cat that they had, uh, it's called Charlie. They went away for a month to Spain, just left it outside. And it, it feeds itself. If a cat gets hungry, it sorts itself out. That's, that's what they do, they're wild. I mean, it, it had lost an eye by the time they got back, but it didn't go hungry. Sick of it. Hello. We've taken time out of our busy schedule to tell you about the new series of The Ricky Gervais Show. It's coming soon, in fact very soon, August the 22nd. It's another six half hours of drivel available on iTunes and Audible um, and we've got loads to talk about because we've just been filming the new series of Extras which is you know turning out fantastic. Well that's not for us to say. Wow it's us that's talking I'm telling you it's brilliant. Uh, no doubt win all the awards. Well we don't do it to win an award. It's not no we don't do it to win an award we do it to win loads particularly the American ones. Brilliant so look forward to that as well but anyway the, uh, the Ricky Gervais show um, featuring me Ricky Gervais, Stephen Merchant Hello. and of course Carl Pilkins. There he is. All right. So, uh, yeah, we've been working with the likes of Orlando Bloom and uh, Chris Martin from Coldplay. David Bowie. David Bowie, Sir Ian McKellen, Daniel Radcliffe. So we've got a lot to talk about, Thank haven't we? We've got a lot to talk about. And, uh, Carl, it's been, it's been three months, so have you got anything to talk about? Have you been doing stuff? Yeah, I've been doing loads of stuff, yeah. Yeah, we well, say that. The reason I ask is because on one podcast... Um, your entire week's events consisted of going to the cobblers uh, and that made it into the diary. So have you done anything interesting? Yeah, just doing loads of stuff, yeah. Uh... It was weird, right? I was in the park, right? Just sat there having an apple, finished eating it, chucked it on the floor, right? Within seconds, an ant was on it, eating it. It's weird, isn't it, right? How that ant 
is totally different to me. Isn't it? What it gets up to in a day and that couldn't be further away from what I'm doing. And yet, we both like an apple. Look at it, it's loving it. I don't think I'd be that good as an ant. Because thinking about it, right, if I was that ant sat on there, I'd probably be overfaced by that apple. It's too much. And also, I, I sort of like to know what I'm going to be eating. At the start of the day, I'll say to my girlfriend, like, right, what are we having for tea tonight? She'll go, why do you need to know? And I go, because I like to know. I like to get my taste buds ready and that. Whereas that ant, five minutes ago, it didn't know it was going to be having apple. But it's got to have it, because it might not find anything else. I, I wouldn't like that. I wouldn't want to be an ant. Carl. 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 What are you thinking just then? Just thinking of stuff that I've been up to and that. Daydreaming more like. Nothing wrong with daydreaming, Steve. Jesus, you know how fucking annoying that is. Go and do something. Just fuck off. Go on, go home. Read a book. Jesus. That's my ending. All right? Yeah. So just to recap, all new Ricky Gervais show with Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant and Carl Pilkington available from August 22nd on iTunes, uh, audible.com or via Ricky Gervais website, rickygervais.com. Um, is that it? That's the awards. Yes. Huh? Awards. What? What I'm saying is, right, there's now too much choice. Whenever you get a menu in a restaurant, it's not like, oh, right, what is the, yeah, I'll have that. There's too much. It's like a book now, isn't it? And you look <laughs> at it all. And then you've got to that point now that people are even taking a risk when they're eating. What do you mean? Um, you know, in, in Japan or China or something, they're eating that fish. <laughs> that if it's not cooked right, it can kill you, right? Yeah. Not worth the risk when there's so many other fish. Yeah, I agree. Why do, why have mackerel, they... have a bit of cod or whatever. <laughs> yeah, as soon as there's a the risk, risk yeah. take it off. Take it off I agree. Menu. I totally agree. Not worth what, it. What, uh, we've got a fish that might or might not kill you. Well, um, is there anything that definitely won't kill you? Yeah, a bit of chicken won't kill you. Right. I'll play safe then. I'll have that. I'll have that. I'll have the chicken. That's what I'm saying. It seems to be the trend at the moment for people to, to eat things that you shouldn't really be eating. Octopus. They say, oh, it's, it's best if you eat them alive or something, right? And there's been stories of people who've been eating them, and because they're still alive, the legs are like, you know, you get get round the neck and what have you, inside, and uh, and they choke you. Why would you want to eat that? If you're going to eat a live animal, don't eat one that's got eight arms that can get hold of your neck. I could understand that if we've run out of everything else, right? Alright, what's left? Octopus. Go on then, I'll have a leg. But there's no need to be eating that at this moment in time. I hadn't had pasta till I was about 24. Now, kids, kids are having all this stuff. We're away for a weekend a couple of weeks ago. Uh, sat in a restaurant. Some kid as for sorbet, he's only about 11. Just the amount of juices they've got now as well. When I was a kid it was just, you just had the one choice, you had orange. Now you look at it, it's like you, you've got you've got apple juice, you've got pineapple, cranberry. Uh, I saw a carrot juice the other day. Out of all the bits of food that are out there, I would not think about getting juice out of a carrot. People are always going on about that, that place where they eat dogs, saying, oh, that's, that's terrible, that. But I don't think it's that bad. As long as it's, you know, it's their own dog.
if we're eating octopuses, what, why are dogs getting away with it? Excuse me, I don't suppose you've got a copy of The World of Carl Pilkington, have you? Oh, sorry. It is rather new. The World of Carl Pilkington. No luck, Carl. Never mind. There's still a few more to try. Good old yellow pages. We don't just help with the nasty things in life like a block drain. We're there for the nice things too. You do? Great. Can, can you keep it for me? Yeah, my name is Carl Pilkington. Yeah. Yeah, it is me on the cover, yeah. Do you mean it looks round? Heads are meant to be round, you cheeky bastard. Just keep it for me.